Hello, my name is Lance Edmondster. I'm pastor of the Grace Gospel Church in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. My wife and I, we run the online ministry called The Good News Voice. We have a Facebook page, YouTube channel. We also have some other social media sites. I would encourage you to join us on Facebook, send us a friend request, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can email me any question you want at thegoodnewsvoice at gmail.com. I have people email me questions. No, definitely keep their names in confidence. My wife sends out a verse every day. We just finished uh, the book of Philippians, but inspirational verses, something that obviously helps us keep our mind on Christ and keep us focused on the living word every single day. Today is Memorial Day. Well, actually, tomorrow's a Memorial Day. It's Memorial Weekend. And I want to talk a little bit about Memorial. I just want to give thanks to all of our veterans and uh, our service men and women that have served this great country. Uh, I know that some, some individuals have gave all so we could receive all. And uh, all the freedoms that we have in this greatest republic in the world, the greatest country. United States of America. I know sometimes we feel like our freedoms, you know, constitutional liberties are being attacked daily, but, uh, you know, it is the greatest country in the world, and we have so many blessings just being born in the United States of America. And again, I want to thank all the men and women that continue to fight for the freedoms that we have, and I also want to thank all the men and women that gave their lives you know, for this great country. So we can sit here today and talk about the gospel. But also want to remember Memorial Weekend is a time of made me think about Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ gave all so we could receive all. We're all hell doomed sinners without the blood of Jesus Christ being put to our account. None of us deserve to go to heaven. Matter of fact, we all deserve to go to hell. Yet Jesus Christ loved us. He's the God of love. He's the God of mercy. He's the God of grace. And he loved us. He ultimately left his glorification, never leaves his deity because he is God, revealed himself in the flesh, and he ultimately died a perfect sacrifice for sin. He turned the altar, turned the cross into an altar. He turned the body of himself into the Lamb of God, an ultimate sacrifice, paying a perfect sacrifice for sin, a satisfied sacrifice I know man wants today to say that man's sacrifice or Christ's sacrifice is insufficient, but we know that the work is done, what Christ did. It was a satisfied sacrifice. It was a propitiation, a propitiatory sacrifice. God the Father accepted his son's death payment for sin, and resurrection is proof that God the Father accepted his son's death payment for sin. And that is a you know memorial weekend. We should be celebrating Memorial Day every single day is what we should be doing instead of once a year celebrating, you know, in in memory of our loved ones or service individuals. We should ultimately have in memory every single day, Jesus Christ. What an awesome thing that he saved us from a hell we deserve to a heaven we don't. I love Jesus Christ. You know, I do not like man-made religions, man's Man, man has taken, you know, religion and it's all about man's efforts and them completing the work to get to heaven. And that's a tool of Satan, which is really sad. The Bible here, God breathed, has given it to us and it's our responsibility to read the word and know the truth. And if there's going to be pastors and preachers of the word, they need to speak the truth. It's not about a denomination. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about the Word of God. It's about us being dead in our sins. We could never make a perfect sacrifice. It's about Jesus Christ, how He died a perfect sacrifice for all sin, paying for all sin. Only God could make a payment for all sin. And only God could die for all sin. And only God could be buried for all sin. And only God could resurrect, showing the world that He paid 
for all sin. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is fully God. And that's really what today's general learning, of general and structural objectives are today is we understand that we first are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and that we then grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We grow in grace. We're saved by Jesus Christ and we grow by Jesus Christ. We don't live the Christian life without Jesus Christ. It's not I or my will, or my effort that I pump out the Christian lifestyle. It's not self-dependence, but Christ-dependence every single day, living by faith in Jesus Christ. That's how I grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ. And that would be the specific learning objective today. The specific learning objective today is that it's not about self-dependence. It's about Christ-dependence. And reading that word, having your man, mind transformed by the word of God. But before we start, you know, it's been a great week. A great week. Me and my wife have had some great fellowship in the word. We've had a couple friends, brothers in Christ come over. We've done a couple Bible studies over the phone. And it's been a great week. Great fellowship with brothers, sisters in Christ. I have to say the brothers in Kenya... They continue to share the plan of salvation, the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. And uh, I just you know, want to, before we start, we'll pray for Kenya and the Philippines and some of the pastors in Cameroon. I want to pray for our local saints here that we, you know, allowed to come to, together to have fellowship again and glorify and magnify Jesus Christ. But before we open with prayer, you know, I just hope that one, everybody's doing fine, everybody's staying healthy, and they're getting, you know, physical, the physical needs met and their spiritual needs met. I pray that, you know, every day you're grateful for something in your life, that you, you know, that you would focus on Jesus Christ. <clears throat> to me, I'm so grateful that he saved me from a hell that I deserve to heaven. I don't. I'm not worth saving, but you know, that's who he is. He loved me just who who I am, and he, you know, before I knew myself, he died for me, all of my sins, all of them, and he was buried for me, and he resurrected for me, and he offers me this free gift, and there's nothing greater, nothing, nothing greater than eternal life in heaven, freely received by faith in Christ alone, and that's why I love Christ so much, and I hope that you see what I see, that the scales have been removed from your eyes, the you know, your ears have been cleaned and you can see the love of Jesus Christ that he has for each and every one of you. So I would hope that you're grateful for something in your life every single day. And number three, I would also that you remember what we discussed in Galatians chapter two. You know, in Galatians chapter one, we talked about how the Galatians there were soon removed from the gospel. That, uh, you know, somebody come in and tried to add you know, works for salvation, add a yoke to them that they could not burden, that they were quickly re removed. And the goal is ultimately like the specific learning objective. It's not about when we get saved. It's not about being self-dependent. It's, be, it's about being Christ-dependent. And it's about being established in the faith, the faith of Christ, growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's about having your mind being perfected. It's about having that spiritual maturity in Christ, allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal the deeper things of God through the Word of God. So it's not about getting saved and then going back under the law, which what the, somebody did for the Galatians. And we're going to read here in Galatians chapter 3 that you know, the law does nothing. It does nothing. The law was given to show us that we're sinners. The law actually points us to Jesus Christ. We know that Galatians or Romans 3, 19 and 20 shows us the law was given to show that we're guilty before God. Galatians 3, 24 tells us the law was our schoolmaster to point us to Christ. Galatians 3, 26 tells us that we become children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So the flesh will never, ever fulfill the law, ever. Yet we have man every single day trying to fulfill that flesh, but we know that 
if you fail one time, you've, if you break one law, you've broken them all. And we know that we were conceived in sin, born in sin, and we've missed the law right from birth, right from conception. So that's really what we remembered there from Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2. We know that Paul, he actually held his brother Peter accountable, that his conduct did not support the grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that when there was law keepers around, that he would not ultimately eat with Gentiles, you know, people that were uncircumcised. And um, so by his actions, he was ultimately uh, not supporting the gospel of Christ. And ultimately, Peter was held accountable by Paul. And that shows about brotherly love, that we're, you know, our actions should support the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, our conduct should continue to support the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not our conduct. Conduct doesn't save anybody, but it sure does give credence to what we speak. So we learn that. We know that Paul ultimately told Peter, both of them, you know, they could never keep the law, that both of them were saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, that the law would never justify them, that they were they were justified by their faith in Jesus Christ, which is Galatians 2.16. So that's really what we studied so far. And as we go into Galatians chapter 3, Paul talks to the Galatians about, you know, what they received by faith and what they did received by the law. Though he'll maybe compare, contrast. And we should be able to see that right in the opening verse. But before we start, I mean, we talked about general instructional objectives that we're saved by grace through faith in Christ, and we grow by grace through faith in Christ. We talked about specific learning outcomes for this lesson, and that's really going to be about not living the Christian life on self-dependence, but Christ-dependence. We talked about what's been happening this week. You know, like I said, Kenya's been active with the gospel. I know they've been doing a lot of printing and sharing the gospel. I've received some pictures that they were sharing the gospel with over 500 individuals, which is inspiring, which is very encouraging to hear. And uh, what an honor that the Grace Gospel Church of Grand Rapids is a part of that. We know we have many people sending in financial support to furtherance the gospel. We send money to Kenya, Cameroon, Philippines. We send money for them to buy Bibles. We send money for them to print out literature to uh, furtherance the gospel of Christ. And ultimately, we help them buy some of their, you know, to support their physical needs to buy, you know, food during this tough time. Any money that's been given to the Grace Gospel Church or the Good News Voice, zero money of that goes towards you know, a wage for anybody, all money, all financial gain is given to furtherance the gospel. And again, buy Bibles, literature related to the gospel of Christ. And it's all about, you know, the goal is that we could share the gospel and ultimately somebody would obtain the salvation that we've obtained, that uh, they would be added to the body of Christ. So if you feel compelled to support A ministry that is all about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can write a check to the Good News Voice or the Grace Gospel Church and mail it to 22549 Kangas Road, Bovee, Minnesota 55709. We are tax exempt. Ultimately, your grace gift can be used as a tax write off, and I do document who does give. The grace gifts and at the end of the year you could use that as a tax exempt status for your tax write-offs but anyways let's open with a word of prayer it's been a great week and let's just pray that everybody here would get something from the word of god as we study galatians chapter 3. let's open with a word of prayer dear heavenly father father we just want to thank you for christ we're so thankful that you loved us sinners just the way we are and you sent your beloved son to the cross of calvary to die for our sins all of our sins as we know as colossians 2 13 tells us all trespasses he died for them all and ultimately at the cross 
We know Jesus Christ says, it is finished. The work of done for salvation is done. And we know that ultimately he gave up the ghost and he was buried that day. A testimony, testimony to the world, a witness to the world that he paid the ultimate sacrifice for sin. And he was buried for three days. Then three days later, he triumphed from the grave, triumphing over sin, triumphing over death, conquering death, showing all mankind the payment for sins paid for, paid in full, that God the Father accepted his son's death payment for sin. And we know that Christ walked on earth 40 days thereafter and then ultimately ascended to heaven and he sits at the right hand of the Father today. The work is done. We know 50 days after the resurrection, we know the Holy Spirit was given to the church. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell each believer as they trust in Christ alone. A seal, a sign, showing us that we're a purchased possession, that we are a child of God, a promise guaranteed that we are a purchased possession until the day of redemption, until ultimately, ultimately, face to face with God. Have that eternal inheritance in heaven waiting for us. Ultimately, how we've been translated to the kingdom of his son. How awesome is that? That is awesome. We know that all blessings are received in Jesus Christ. We're so we're so, so thankful for Christ and Christ alone. He's our all and in all. It's all about Jesus Christ. And Father, to your children, you know, one, we just pray that we our children, your children, their father would they would grow up in grace and ultimately under have the fullness of Christ. They would understand the importance, ultimately the fruits of the Spirit, and ultimately we know the one of the main spirits fruits of the spirit is love and that we could have a love for others as Christ loved us and that we would share the gospel of Christ with other people and that they would be added to the body of Christ they'd be translated from a hell they deserve to a heaven they don't that their eternal destiny would be ultimately changed all by the gospel of Christ because that's the power of the gospel and we would pray that your children their father they would continue to grow in grace grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, they would have spiritual maturity, that their mind would be transformed by the Word of God. They would understand that Christian living is not about self-dependence, but Christ's dependence. So, Father, we just pray that, one, anybody watching this message, they would get saved if they're not saved. And two, to your children, they would understand that they would grow in grace through the knowledge of Christ and allow the, you know, ultimately, not the flesh, but ultimately through the Spirit, we would ultimately see the fruits of the Spirit work through us, having our mind transformed by the Word of God. And we would understand that this is not our home. And then ultimately we would understand the importance of sharing the gospel of Christ because that's what it's all about. That we would not get caught up into this world and not even ultimately find any happiness in this world because it's all about the flesh. I also pray for our brothers and sisters in the Philippines. We pray for our beloved brother, Pastor Benjamin. We just pray that ultimately his church there is continue to be blessed. He continue to share the gospel there. And ultimately, we just pray that you would that he would continue to lead and shepherd his flock that you've given him, that Father. We pray for the pastors in Kenya, Cameroon. You know, there's many to mention there. Pastor Jeffrey, Fedoris, you know, Simon, Joseph, Simeon. We pray for Pastor Nadong. Just a lot of pastors over there. And we just pray that you continue to provide that spiritual fruit there, Father, the spiritual need and ultimately the physical needs. And we just pray that we, as we continue to partner to further into the gospel of Christ, that ultimately, you know, individuals would find that whatever, whatever their gift is, and that is if it's to financially support the gospel of Christ, to preach the gospel of Christ, to encourage others in the gospel of Christ, whatever that is, that they would understand that 
And ultimately it is all the members of the body working together to support. So if we can be that support to the Philippines and to Kenya, to we could physically support those needs and spiritually support those needs. We just pray that you continue to use this, Father, and ultimately that you'd spoke, speak to every individual's heart watching this video. And they would understand their role in the furtherance of the gospel of Christ. And Father, we just as we come to Memorial Weekend here, Memorial Day, we want to give thanks to all the servicemen and women that ultimately died for our great, great country. And ultimately that we could have the freedoms that we do have. We pray for our leaders of this country, that they continue to ultimately make the right decision, that we make biblically sound decisions, not ultimately decisions that ultimately appease men, but ultimately appease God. Not a politically correct decision-making, but a biblically correct decision-making. We pray that you be with our leaders there, Father. We also pray that you'd be uh, with uh, all the individuals, that they would ultimately remember Christ every single single day, that we would ultimately have a thanksgiving of Jesus Christ every single day in our life, that we would ultimately remember the work of redemption, that He's what he's done for us at the cross of Calvary. And ultimately, that we would read the Word of God. We do a lot of praying. We do a lot of talking to God. But ultimately, that ultimately we would read His Word and ultimately see that what He has to say to us. So we would pray that you'd put that on our heart, there, Father. And ultimately, get the Bible off the shelf and read His Word every single day. And that we would grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ. We also pray that you would bless this message. If anybody's watching this message, they would understand they're a sinner. They could never earn salvation by being good enough, by doing a ritual, a sacrament, a tradition, or work, being water baptized, going to confirmation, going to communion, partaking in, ultimately, the Lord's Supper, communion, anything like that. None, none of that's going to absolve sin. None of that's going to remove sin. We know the payment for sin is death. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And that's why Christ died on the cross for each and every person. And we pray that every person would see that in their mind's eye, that ultimately their faith would be placed in the finished redemptive work of Christ. Believe that Christ died on the cross for their sins, burial, resurrection. And then every child of God would then also grow in grace. So we just pray that every child, one, would receive something from the message, and two, if a person's not saved, that the message would be very clear, that they would come to Christ, receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they then would become a son of God by the power of gospel, born again forever child of God. Pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. So let's look at Galatians chapter 3. Look at Galatians chapter 3. And Paul writes to the Galatians here. He says, O foolish Galatians, who wants to be a fool? I know I don't want to be a fool. I know I don't want to be ignorant on any subject especially pertaining to the gospel of christ but here ultimately they know that they became fools and that's sad that they would ultimately be ignorant on the subject of the gospel of christ and as a child of god ultimately they're born again the galatians are born again these people in laodicea iconium Derby in the cities that Paul went and preached the gospel to on his first and third mission trip. They're saved, but ultimately shows you how quick a child of God, somebody that is saved, ultimately can be fooled. And it's important that we establish each other in the faith, that we grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. These individuals, somebody came in, legalizers came in and told them ultimately they needed to be circumcised. They needed to be law keepers. They needed to be proselytes first before they could ever be saved. That's false. Or that they would, you know, or that maybe even uh, telling them they, you know, to get, they get saved and ultimately they would then go back on the law. We know that's not what Galatians is about here, but ultimately we know that people do get saved and they try to go, go back on the law and ultimately receive that sanctification, that holiness, that daily application in their life. And that's a false message too. So don't be a fool when it comes to the gospel of Christ. Don't be ignorant on the subject. Don't be ignorant on the subject of justification, that, which is we know that justification is ultimately being saved from the penalty of sin. That's hell. 
Justification is only received in Christ alone. And ultimately, sanctification made holy. But ultimately, there's that progressive sanctification piece that is growing in grace. That's the daily growing every single day that we have. And that's really what we're going to be talking a lot about here today. And then there is the glorification piece. One day we'll be delivered from the presence of sin, having a glorified body in heaven in the presence of our Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, let's not be ignorant on the gospel of Christ. Let's not be ignorant on the subjects of justification, sanctification, and glorification. Let's not be ignorant on the subject of what it means to be perfect. Because ultimately, you are perfect in position. That's justification. There's relative perfection, and that's the daily sanctification. That's the daily growing in grace. And ultimately, we know that there's the ultimate perfection, and that's the glorification piece. So, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? So somebody come in and ultimately trick them. Trick them. Ultimately, they uh, there was a fascination with something else, a charm that uh, an individual had ultimately tricked these individuals, the Galatians. And we see that today. You know, we see that Satan will use ultimately. He'll, he thinks, we know Lucifer, ultimately, I think Lucifer's name is the, you know, he says he's the light giver. He's not the light giver. And so many individuals thinking that they ultimately are enlightened on a new subject. And ultimately, that's why we have 2,000 different religions in the world. And uh, we know only the true source of light is Jesus Christ. And the goal is that you would have a full understanding of Jesus Christ. A full understanding that he's fully God. That he's from eternity past to eternity future. He's the one that, he is the creator. He created everything. We know that in John chapter 1 tells us that. We know that Jesus is not an angel transformed from the archangel Michael. We know he's not ultimately the brother of Satan. We know there's two worldwide religions today that ultimately say Jesus Christ is a created being. And we know that is a lie. That is a false message. And ultimately, if you see him as a created being, if you see him as an angel transformed, a brother of Satan, a man, a prophet, then we can understand why you leave him on the cross. We can understand why an individual would want to work for salvation because if you don't see him as God, you feel you would have to do something. But I'm telling you, that's the Jesus of the Bible is God. He's God from eternity past. And that's what it is all about, that you would have a full understanding of who Jesus Christ is. One, for salvation, and then two, ultimately, for sanctification, for growing in grace in Christ. That you would not be fooled by some trickery, from some charm, from an individual that, that ultimately comes along and says he has a new knowledge. He's been enlightened by a figure and ultimately... That is a false message. Just like Joseph Smith in 1825, he says he was enlightened by the angel Moroni. And what a false message that is. Do you think salvation has only been offered to that group of individuals from 1825 from then on? Forget that. Ultimately, we know through every dispensation in the Bible, man has failed all the way back to Adam and Eve. Man has failed. God created Adam and Eve in innocence, and they still failed. Yet, how were they saved? By their faith in Christ. We know that in Genesis 3.15, the Messiah was promised. The virgin birth right there, that ultimately he was coming. And we know that in Genesis 4.1, they were looking for that man right then and there. Every individual has always, before Christ came, they looked to the cross, we look back to the cross, Every individual has always been saved by grace through faith in Christ. That's what it's all about. Abraham seen the day of Christ. John chapter 8 tells us that Abraham seen the day of Christ and ultimately he rejoiced. You know, Galatians chapter 3 tells us that ultimately we were going to read here, not maybe today, but ultimately how the gospel shared with Abraham. 
Important stuff to understand. So let's not be fooled by like Russell's and Rutherford in 1879 coming along and ultimately, you know, telling individuals that Jesus Christ is uh, an angel transformed. Or 1825, Joseph Smith ultimately telling individuals that, you know, Jesus Christ is, uh, I believe, the brother of Satan. Ultimately, always saying that, you know, both of these religions saying that Jesus is a created being, which again is a false message. Jesus Christ is creator. He has no beginning and no end. So, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Be not tricked by trickery or fascination or charm by some individual that is charismatic, comes in and speaks of himself or speaks of a new knowledge or new enlightening information because we know it's false. Everything you'll ever need is in the and is in the Bible. It's God's word. It's God breathes word. We know that. And ultimately it is infallible. We know man's fallible, but we know God is infallible. And we see here, that we see the problem that you should not obey the truth. Not obey the truth. Not obey the gospel of, of Christ. Saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And ultimately then growing in grace in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But they ultimately were not obeying the truth. Somebody came in and said ultimately, yeah, you couldn't be saved by grace through faith in Christ. That you'd have, you first got to be a law keeper. You got to be a legalizer first. And that's a false message. Ultimately, you're working for salvation for that. And we know the power of the gospel. We know the power ultimately tells us in Romans 1.16. Very important message here. You know, man, ultimately, we know that uh, we know that there's some Pente Pentecostal preachers out there. They, they definitely want to slay people in the spirit. And ultimately, they have prayer cloths that you can purchase. And they always want this power. And man has been always looking for this power. But you want true power? The true power, God has allowed us to raise people from the dead. Think about that. Because people, before people saved, they are dead in their sins. When you share the gospel, you ultimately are being allowed to ultimately change a person's destiny from hell to heaven. Again, not you, but ultimately the word of God. But that's true power. And God's being allowed, has allowed us to share that gospel with individuals. Ultimately, we could change, be partakers in where individuals' eternal destinies change. That's the power of the gospel. When you preach the word of God, ultimately his word is unleashed. It does not return void. And tells us here in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. You want to see true power of God, share the gospel with individuals. Because it, it changes their destiny we know that in Colossians chapter 1, it tells us that. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 says, Giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So one, giving thanks, he's made us fit. Ultimately, we're receiving the righteousness required with the garment of salvation, ultimately all by the blood of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we see that in Colossians 1.14. We'll read that in a little bit here. But ultimately, he is the one that does that. And that's all received by faith in Christ. 13, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, delivered us from the power of darkness, and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's the power of the gospel. That ultimately, you be translated from the darkness, eternal darkness, unto the kingdom of the son. That's the power of the gospel. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. That's true power. And ultimately, these individuals have been removed from that. That you should not obey the truth. And that's why we want to establish people in the faith, the good news voice, the grace gospel church, we want to establish people in the faith. It's always been about Christ. We'll always be about Christ. We're saved. People are saved by grace through faith in Christ. And people grow in the knowledge of Christ. So you grow. You're saved by grace. You grow by grace. How awesome is that? But we see here, they obey not the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been openly set forth, crucified among you. So before, 
They clearly seen the gospel with their mind's eye. They trusted in Christ alone as their Savior. At one point, they seen it so clearly. They seen it in their eyes, like they were right there standing at the base of the cross. They actually, as an eyewitness account, like the apostles looking at Jesus Christ on the cross, they could see it so clearly in their mind, yet they were, somebody fooled them, bewitched them. Hmm. That's sad that an individual would do that. Verse 2. One question for them. This only would I learn of you. Did you receive? Receive ye the Spirit by the works of law or by the hearing of faith? How did you receive the Holy Spirit? Did you receive the Holy Spirit by the law? Or did you receive the Spirit by faith? That's a great question. And many people, you know, they think they have the Spirit. and You know, or maybe they don't even know about the Holy Spirit. But we know ultimately the Holy Spirit comes to speak Christ. That's it. Doesn't come to glorify himself. But we see there in Ephesians chapter 1, how you receive the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 says, In whom you also trusted. So we know that Paul here writing to the church of Ephesus. It is a prison epistle here. And ultimately he's telling them, ultimately how people were predestined, how God the Father predestined the process of salvation, how Jesus Christ carried out that plan. He also talks about the chosen. If you want to be the chosen, God never chose any individual to heaven or hell, but he chose, if you want to be the chosen, they are in Christ. That's been the eternal plan. We know the plan of salvation has been laid. Ultimately, that plan has been laid out prior to the world ever being created or spoken into existence. That's all laid out in Ephesians chapter 1. It talks about the Trinity there. In Ephesians chapter 1, the role of God the Father ultimately planning the, the role of salvation, Jesus Christ carrying out the plan of salvation, and we know the Holy Spirit sealing individuals when they believe the gospel of Christ. They believe the plan of salvation. And that's what's happening here. He says in verse 13, In whom you also trusted, because <coughs> we know that ultimately verse 7 through 12 there speaks of Christ. So in Christ you also trusted, in whom you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, heard the word of truth, that the gospel of your salvation. So they heard the word of truth. They heard the gospel, which we know 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 tells us the gospel. Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again according to the scriptures, specifically 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4. So they heard that. They believed that. In whom also after you believed, sealed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the earnest of our inheritance? It's a down payment until the redemption of our purchased possession untold unto the praise of his glory. It's a guaranteed sealing, sealing into his family, sealing you, baptizing you into the body of Christ, sealing you as a child of God, guaranteeing your inheritance into heaven. So, Paul's question to the Galatians are, did you receive that spirit by the law, works of the law, or did you receive that spirit by faith in Christ? And the Galatians knew that answer. And he knew the right question to ask those individuals. And they knew that they did not receive the spirit by keeping the law. He knew they received the spirit By faith in Christ alone. That Paul came to them. Shared the gospel with them. The gospel of salvation. They heard it. They heard the word of truth. They believed it. Immediately receiving the Holy Spirit of promise. 
verse 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Another great question. Are you so foolish? One, leave the power of the gospel that translates individuals from eternal darkness to the kingdom of his son and go back under a system, a religious performance system that shows that ultimately you've missed the mark every single day. Are you so foolish? And it would be so, it's so encouraging to us to not be the foolish Galatians as in verse 1 or so in verse 3 that somebody would come along and tell them Oh, you need to be circumcised. You need to be law keepers first. Or you need to be water baptized. You need to have your infant baptized. You need to confess your sins to a man first. You need to go to be confirmed and the you know, ultimate through confirmation. That's when you receive the Holy Spirit. Or to receive Jesus Christ, you must receive him <coughs> through bread and through wine. You'll receive him ultimately through communion. Those are false messages. And so many people today will believe those false messages. Are you so foolish that individuals that are saved would go back on a religious performance system? They can't lose their salvation, but ultimately here's the problem is that their kids, you know, or ultimately their grandkids watching them fall back on a religious performance system. Their kids will probably never hear the gospel and those kids will never get saved. Sad. Or two, the individual is never going to grow in grace. Allow the Holy Spirit working through them. And ultimately, understanding, having a full knowledge of Christ when reading the scriptures and ultimately understanding the importance of raising, then raising your kids on the gospel of Christ, sharing the gospel with your friends and neighbors, sharing the gospel with others, so they then them also can be translated from a hell they deserve to the kingdom of his son. We would under we would ultimately be filled with the, well, the fruits of the spirit. And that happens by the, your mind being transformed by the word of God. But these one individuals were so foolish. We see it happening today also. But let's learn from the Galatians. We know in John chapter 6, <coughs> verse 63. <clears throat> it is spirit that giveth life. <clears throat> the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. The flesh profiteth nothing. So it's not about pounding out a religious performance system to get saved, because that will never save anybody. You could never be good enough to earn eternal life. That's why Christ revealed himself in the flesh. And then too, after you get saved, you never go back under a religious performance system either. The flesh profiteth nothing. You have a new nature and ultimately that new nature has a desire to serve God we know that new nature is weak but ultimately we know through the reading of the word we know the ultimately the Holy Spirit will work through the nature and ultimately your mind being transformed by the word of God allowing the fruits of the spirit to work through you again it's not self-dependent on the Christian living it's Christ dependent on Christian living he is the center of it. Let's look at the perfect, you know, basically perfection there. You know, it talks about, are you now made perfect by the flesh? The Bible does talk about perfection. So let's be real clear here. Positional perfection is, you know, we know there. You ultimately you are made holy. You can be you're sanctified also when you trust in Christ alone. One, you're justified. Two, you're sanctified, made holy. That's what sanctified means, made holy. 
But ultimately, we know that there's a progressive sanctification, a daily growing in grace. We know that we've been delivered from the penalty of sin, and then we have the power every single day delivered from the power of sin, that not ultimately having to live a life of that old nature. And that's what Romans 7 is all about. Maybe we should look at Romans 7 before we get into ultimately what perfection is all about. Because we know that that perfection is that relative perfection. We're not looking at positional perfection because we receive positional perfection when we trust in Christ alone. But it's that daily perfection, that spiritual maturity as a believer, as a child of God, God wants for us. He does not want us to be like the Corinthians. He does not want us to be babes in Christ forever. He wants you to grow in Christ. So babes, ultimately, we know that Second Peter chapter 2 there, we know that babes, are you know they need to be fed the milk of the word. And we're going to look at this maybe later on, but Hebrews chapter 5 talks about the meat of the word. And ultimately, so many people, they want, you know, the, the milk and the meat. And, uh, but it ultimately, it goes all back to Christ. And so hopefully we can have that clear understanding today. But let's look at Romans chapter 7. And we see here that there's a warring happening in Paul. We'll start in verse 15. And see if we can't have a clear understanding here. And we'll see ultimately we'll have, there's a desire there to serve God. But ultimately there is no power there in that new nature. This is the Holy Spirit. So we look at verse 15, 7. For that which I do, I understand not. For what I would, that I do not. That do I not. But what I hate, that do I if then I do that which I would not, I consent in the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, that old nature. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So he's ultimately talking about he was ignorant on the first part of the process here of ultimately there's a will to do good, but he doesn't know how to perform it. And you'll see how many times the eyes are. I believe there's 34 times I is mentioned. And it's all about self-dependence here, trying to live the Christian lifestyle alone <coughs> versus Christ dependent. So we see all the eyes. Verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. For the good that I would, your new nature, I do not. But the evil which I would not, old nature, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That sin nature, having power over that new nature. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So we see this warring happening, and he's defeated over and over and over. That I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. And ultimately, we see the failure over and over and over. And that sin nature continuing to have power. And ultimately, he comes to the conclusion, verse 24, O wretched man that I am! O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of, of death? <clears throat> He's frustrated. Failure after failure after is the Christian living, trying to do it all by himself. I thank God through Jesus Christ. And we see here a change in focus. A change in focus. So instead of I, 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 I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Verse 8, I'm sorry, chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who walk, who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So we see here ultimately... Walking 
in Christ. Not after the flesh, but in the spirit. And we see it's more of a mental thing here. For the law of the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So we see ultimately here how the Holy Spirit works through us, transforming our mind by the Word of God, and we become more Christ-dependent. Not living the Christian life by myself, self-dependent, as all the eyes we see there 34 times. Ultimately, we see failure after failure after failure. But ultimately, we know, thank God, we changed the focus. Instead of I, we focus now on Christ, saved by grace through faith in Christ. Then we live by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So we grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ. So we're going to see this continued theme where we ultimately allowing the Spirit, the more we allow the Word of God to work on our mind, the Holy Spirit works through us. And we'll see that through the Word here. We'll see that. Let's go back to Galatians. And I have some verses I want to review here with you. So it's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And we'll see ultimately this perfection, ultimately this mind, and ultimately having a full knowledge of Christ is what we're talking about. So we see Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting a spiritual maturity here. The perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we see this ultimately, this perfecting, ultimately having a full knowledge of God is ultimately, it's all about building up the body of Christ, adding members to the body of Christ, building up members of the body of Christ. And verse 13, till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So we have this full knowledge of God unto a perfect man, so we're established in the faith. We see that he's, we're, how individuals are saved by grace of faith in Christ and that they grow by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. That's the goal here. Unto a perfect man, under the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ, having a full understanding that it is Christ. He's fully God. Ultimately, the whole Bible is about Jesus Christ. Verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children like the Corinthians, babes in Christ, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. So ultimately, we're to understand that we grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ, we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and we grow by grace and faith in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that we would then, some new knowledge comes along, that we not go back under the law thinking we're going to get ultimately become more sanctified through that because that's a false message and now that the goal here is ultimately that we would be established in the faith that we would ultimately edify the body of christ that we would not be tossed to and fro like a reed in the river we see as the current changes the reed just goes back and forth that we would be an oak by the river of life established in the faith we would be not tossed to and fro that ultimately we would be not deceived by a message, that we would continue to, to be defenders of the faith, that we would be ultimately keep the gospel clear, that there is no condition for it, that individuals would know if they want to be saved, they must trust in Christ alone. And that's it. Not like the Pope today that says, oh, everybody's going to get to heaven. Even the atheists will get to heaven because of his works. That is a false message. That we henceforth be no more children. So again, growing up, we become children of God by faith in Christ. And he wants us to grow in grace and the knowledge of his son. That's what the epistles are all about. That we would grow to be young men and ultimately old men established in our faith. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, cunning craftiness, just like the, how ultimately the Galatians were bewitched 
Because that's what happens. Men come in, they think they have a new knowledge, and ultimately they they have uh, slick words, charismatic, maybe even good looking. They have a craftiness about them. And ultimately, you know, that's what they do. And they ultimately depart from the word of God. They depart from the truth. And ultimately, it's their own agenda that they have. And what do they say there? By which they lie and wait to deceive. It's exactly what Satan does. He does not want any individual to go to heaven. He wants the gospel to be perverted. He doesn't want individuals to even hear the gospel. And we see that in Kenya, that individuals have not heard the gospel ever. That there's denominations over there that ultimately it's all about idolatry. It's all about sacraments, rituals, things like that. And that's not what it's about. It's about the Word of God. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in Him, grow up into Him in all things, who is the head, even Christ. That's it right there. Ephesians 4.15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him. Grow up into him. Again, having that full understanding of God. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body under the edifying of itself and in love. So the body working together to glorify the head. And we know the head is Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. To glorify and magnify Jesus Christ. We're not speaking of anything else. So we see that Ephesians chapter 4. We know that ultimately Philippians 3.10 says that also. Philippians 3.10-14 through 14 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made comfortable unto his death. Ultimately know him as complete Savior. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, we know that ultimately that resurrection, of the, we're going we're gonna to attain that one day. We'll have that glorified body, the glorification delivered from the presence of sin. But it's not happening yet. And Paul talking about that's not happening for him right now. 12, not as though I had already attained, either, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I apprehended for, apprehended for of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing do I, I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Looking for that, Spiritual maturity every single day, growing in grace. Having a full knowledge of that complete Savior. That is so good. We also see in Colossians 1, 9 through 10, tells us, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. 2 9 says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of God, fullness of the Godhead bodily. Again, having a full knowledge of who he is. Full knowledge of our Savior. Complete knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's God's will. We turn over to Colossians 3. Ultimately, 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man, that old nature with his deeds, and have put on that new man, new nature, that renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So again, having that new knowledge, ultimately your mind being transformed by the word of God. Of God. Verse 11, where... There is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian or Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Christ is all that you will ever, ever need. Having that full understanding. It's that we're saved by grace through faith in Christ and that we grow by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Night and day, praying exceeding that we might see your face, might, might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. So again, speaking to believers here, children of the Most High God, again, having them not stay babes in Christ, that they would grow. Verse 11, Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you increase and abound in love one toward another, toward all men, even as you do toward you. To end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all saints. Isn't that the goal? The goal is ultimately that we would have this full knowledge of Christ, that our life here, that we would ultimately call Christ living through us. And we see that. And we see that in Galatians, as Paul even said there in Galatians chapter 2. Ultimately, we see here is in verse 220, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lived within me, and I live and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So again, we see this, how he's living by faith in Christ alone, who loved me and gave himself for me. And ultimately, how life, how Jesus Christ gave his life for all of us. Ultimately, how we as children should sacrifice our lives, you know, not get caught up into, you know, coveting, wanting things in this earth and obtaining things of this earth that ultimately gets corruptible anyways and ultimately falls all apart, breaks down, can never take with you. Ultimately, when you do die, you've never seen a hearse, ultimately, you know, with a luggage rack, that you would understand that this life is meaningless. And ultimately that, you know, we live, that, but it is yet not I, that, but it is Christ who lives for us, through us, and that we would ultimately see the love and we would have this love and preach love and we see that we know what love is and love is 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God and we know that love is not ultimately, you know, what is the word I'm looking for? Love is not tolerant. That, oh, okay, you do what you want. You want to believe what you want. No, that's not what love is. That love is tells us exactly what love is right here he that loveth no he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love <coughs> in this was manifested the love of god towards us that god sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him that's the goal here in his love not that we love god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins so we see the gospel right there Eleven, beloved if god so loved us we ought also to love one another share the gospel with other individuals no man has seen god at any time if we love one another god dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us uh, the gospel of jesus christ we understand the importance of sharing that with others that perfection, that spiritual maturity, that it is Christ. It's not I, it's not Christian living, that self-dependence. It is Christ-dependence, living by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, growing in the knowledge, having a mind transformed by the Word of God, that perfection, spiritual maturity, understanding in all of us the importance of the gospel of Christ. By this know we that we dwell in Him and He in us, because He hath given us the, His Spirit, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Ultimately, that Spirit being transforming our mind and the importance of sharing the gospel. And we see here, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. That's what we confess with our mouths. That we would not just be babes in Christ. That we would just not... B, 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 there. My bad. 1 Peter 2, 2. Newborn babes desire the pure milk of the world. Pure milk of the word. Yes, as babes born again, reading the word, getting the word, being fed the milk. But as, you know, God does not want us to be babes forever. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as need of milk and not of solid food. For everyone that useth milk is, skill, is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongeth to them that are full age, the old man in Christ, the old man in Christ, even those who are 
by reason to use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That's the goal, that we would be nurtured on the milk of the word and ultimately transferred over to the meat of the word. We would grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ, being teachers of the word, <coughs> so others could obtain a salvation that we have obtained. And we would understand that our lives, like Second Corinthians chapter 5, we would see in, like we read there in Galatians 2.20, but here in ultimately 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14, 15, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus, we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they who live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again, living for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's go back to Galatians chapter 3 here. So we see here, are you so foolish having begun, as, begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect in the flesh? No. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if he yet, yet be in vain? He, therefore, that ministereth to you the spirit, worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of law or by the hearing of faith. It's all done by faith. Faith in Christ alone. So let me show you something. Let this hand here represent you and I. Ultimately, let this hand here represent you and I. And this wallet here represents our sin. God loves you, but he hates your sin. Sin keeps us separated from God. Man will try to tell you that you can cover your sin up by getting going through confirmation, taking partaking in communion, getting water baptized. But we know none of that pays for sin. None of that. There's no man-made religion that will ever pay for sin. Let this hand here represent Jesus Christ, God from eternity past. He went to the cross and he shed his blood for each and every one of our sins, all of our sins. We know that in Timothy, God wants not one person to perish. First Timothy tells us. It's awesome. First Timothy 2 forces who will of all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth for as there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all and be testified in due time. He wants not one man to perish. And he paid for all of our sins and he nailed them to the cross and yet he hung his head and he gave up the ghost. He died and ultimately he was buried and he resurrected the third day, showing us pain for sin. And if you would believe that, the righteousness required to get to heaven is put to your account. Now that you're a child of God, we don't live the Christian lifestyle by I, self-dependence. No, it's not about me pumping out the Christian lifestyle. It's about me becoming Christ-dependent, me having spiritual maturity, me growing up on the Word of God, being nurtured on the Word of the God, and ultimately understanding the importance of becoming a preacher and sharing the gospel with others so others can be translated from ultimately the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son, all by faith in Christ. And we would understand, <coughs> ultimately, we would understand justification, sanctification, and glorification. Justification is ultimately delivered from the penalty of sin. That happens the very second you believe. We know that sanctification, we know that you are made holy the second you believe. But I want to talk about daily sanctification, growing in grace. Ultimately, that daily application of adding the word of God to your life every single day. That you're allowing your mind to be transformed by the word of God. And have a full understanding of who Jesus Christ is. That's what it's all about. And then ultimately glorification. One day being delivered from the presence of sin. And we see that. We see that perfection, same thing. Positional perfection is justification. We see that relative perfection is that spiritual maturity that we're working through every single day, that we're growing in grace, growing in the knowledge. And then we have that ultimate perfection, which is the glorification piece. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for grace. Thank you for Christ. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, be buried, resurrect for us. And if there's anybody out there right now that wants to put their faith, right now, they don't have to stand up, they don't have to do anything. Right now, they can, in their mind's eye, they can ultimately say, you know what? I believe that. I believe that Jesus Christ 
died on the cross for my sins. All of them was buried for me and resurrected for me. I'm trusting in Christ alone as my Savior. They've been born again. And Father, to your children out there, they would understand that they saved by grace through faith. And they would hope that they would understand that they grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ. That ultimately Christian living is not about being self-dependent. It's about being Christ-dependent. I would hope that they would understand that. And they would read the Word of God and have the Word, ultimately have their mind transformed by the Word of God. And we pray all this in Christ's name. Amen.